Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and members of Missouri Synod Lutheran Churches from North Dakota and Minnesota. Paul is encouraging us. The Word of God is encouraging us to stand firm in our freedom and to use our freedom for good, to be led by the Spirit, the Spirit who has set us free in Jesus Christ to serve God and one another. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Good morning. I'm Pastor Matt Thompson from Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Bismarck, North Dakota, and St. John's Lutheran Church in McCluskey, North Dakota. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The epistle lesson is written in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, also 13 through 25. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. 
For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended in, into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God our, our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message today is from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Galatians 5, verse 1, the word of the Lord. In his book on Christian liberty, Martin Luther begins with two simple and clear statements on the freedom that we have in Christ. Two simple and clear statements which appear at first to be contradictory. A Christian is the most free Lord of all, subject to no one. A Christian is the most dutiful servant of all, subject to everyone. These two sayings are easy to understand, though they appear at first to be contradictory. How can a Christian be free and subject to no one if he is obligated to serve others in love? The answer is simple. We have been set free in Christ to serve. Martin Luther, of course, did not invent this teaching, but found it in the Bible. The scriptures are the source of all teaching in the church, and Martin Luther was a student of the Bible. Our knowledge about God and his will for us is found in the Bible, and it is from the Bible that we learn of God's love in Christ and the gospel of our salvation. More specifically, Luther found this teaching on the liberty of the Christian in our reading this morning from Galatians 5. As the Apostle Paul approaches the end of his letter to the Galatians, he argues in defense of the doctrine of faith and of Christian liberty against the false apostles. He uses every device to convince them, direct speech and teaching from Scripture, laments and complaints. He uses metaphors and analogies. Why? Out of a strong desire to keep them in the freedom achieved for them by Christ. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Galatians 5, verse 1. The freedom that Paul speaks of here is a unique freedom. Eight days from now, we will celebrate the 4th of July. But Paul is not talking about the freedom we enjoy as Americans, the freedom to be our own country, free from the rule of Great Britain, the freedom to establish our own laws according to the will of the people, the freedom embodied in the Bill of Rights. Paul is not talking about this kind of political freedom or even the freedom of the church in America enshrined in the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Nor is Paul talking about the freedom of the flesh, a license and a liberty to sin. Those who enjoy this kind of freedom have no God and no law, and they do as they please. This is a demonic freedom in which the devil sets people free to sin against God, and society. No, Paul speaks of a liberty and a freedom which the devil hates and attacks most bitterly. In our reading this morning, Paul teaches on the freedom in which Christ has set us free, not from some human slavery or political tyrant, but from the eternal wrath of God. A freedom of the conscience, a theological or spiritual freedom, a freedom that makes our conscience free and joyful, unafraid of the judgment of God and the wrath to come. As John the Baptist said to the Pharisees coming to his baptism, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. This is the first and the greatest freedom that a person can enjoy. Political freedom is temporary, and is good only for this life. The freedom of the flesh is a demonic freedom of indulgence and sin. The freedom of the conscience alone is an eternal freedom that sets free the soul. It is a genuine freedom. 
It is an immeasurable freedom. What a gift we have in our minds and in our hearts that we can declare for certain that God is not and will never be wrathful toward us, but will forever be gracious and merciful for the sake of Christ, for the sake of his blood shed on the cross, for the sake of his death in our place, making atonement for all human sin. This is a great freedom which we possess in our minds and in our hearts through faith. It is the freedom of the Christian, a freedom won for us through the death of God's Son. As Paul writes, Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. Romans 5 verse 9. And for God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. Our conscience, therefore, has been set free in Christ. The wrath of God cannot terrify us any longer. Neither the law of God and the commandments, nor sin and our sinful nature, nor the devil with all of his accusations. No matter who denounces us, Christ is our advocate with the Father. This is what John means in his first letter. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. That being said, Paul returns back and emphasizes what this freedom in Christ does not mean. As he writes, You were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians 5, verse 13 and 14. Here Paul makes himself clear that the freedom we have in Christ is not a freedom of the flesh. It is not a license to sin. No, Paul warns us to be on our guard, that we not use our freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Jude calls that kind of thinking a denial of Christ. As he writes, certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Jude chapter 1, verse 4. This is what John Adams meant when he described the nature of freedom in America. Should the people of America practice iniquity and extravagance and rioting this country will be the most miserable habitation in the world because we have no government armed with power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. Avarice, ambition, revenge, and licentiousness would break the strongest cords of our Constitution as a whale goes through a net. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. John Adams. Even in America, the freedom which we have is not a liberty to do harm, but to do good. How much more in the kingdom of God is our freedom in Christ not a liberty to sin, but a freedom of the mind, which leads to a willing obedience of the body. Instead, as Paul writes, through love, serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians 5. After the Revolutionary War, there were Americans who imagined that once we had won liberty from England and from the king, that we would be free in America to do as we pleased without any government at all. This was a naive and irrational dream in a sinful world, government is needed to establish order and to keep the peace. Instead, we organized ourselves as states and as the United States of America. And in place of a king, we established a president and a congress and state government to create new laws for the people. 
In the same way, now that we have been delivered by Christ from the tyranny of sin and the devil, it is not as if we are set free from God to be whoever we want to be in the world and to live according to our own design. No, we have been set free from sin and the power of the devil so that we might now become servants of God and of one another. This is not a license to sin, but a warning and an encouragement to be led and controlled by the Spirit and not the flesh. And so Paul encourages us, do not be led by the flesh, but walk by the Spirit. As he writes, now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21. This is not a complete list, but a sampling of those things which are opposed to the Spirit. Sins of the body, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, sins of the soul, idolatry, sorcery, sins against society, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, sins characterized by a loss of self-control, drunkenness, carousing, then a warning, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5, verse 21. The fruit of the Spirit, however, is much different. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Again, Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23. Again, this is not a complete list, but a sampling of those things which are worked in us by the Spirit of God. Instead of sexual immorality, impurity and sensuality, love. Instead of idolatry and sorcery, joy and peace. Instead of enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions and envy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness and gentleness. Instead of drunkenness and carousing, self-control. Against such things there is no law or judgment or wrath. These are the two ways of life that stand before us as free Christians. In our liberty from the wrath of God from the sake, for the sake of the blood of Christ, we can misuse our liberty and give in to the flesh, gratifying its desires. The end result of that way of living is a loss of faith and the spirit, and then a loss of our inheritance. Or we can be led in freedom by the Spirit, a life of joy and peace which leads to the kingdom of God and eternal life. Paul is encouraging us. The Word of God is encouraging us to stand firm in our freedom and to use our freedom for good, to be led by the Spirit the Spirit who has set us free in Jesus Christ to serve God and one another. May we do so always. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Pray with me as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend local services, I would like to invite you to worship with our congregation. If you are in Bismarck or McCluskey area, please join us at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota, and St. John's Lutheran Church in McCluskey, North Dakota. Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. in Bismarck and 11.30 a.m. in McCluskey. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.